dynamite begins outside in the parking lot. A helicopter descends and once it lands, the doors open. Don Callis steps out. Then Doc, Gallows and Carl Anderson. Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, the new AEW World Tag Team Champions. And then the new AEW World Champion, Kenny by God Omega, who looks a million bucks. They all walk towards the arena on a red carpet, which had been laid out for their arrival. The Elite are here, draped in gold, as we get a 74, as we open up Dynamite here at Stockton Arena. Let's get things started. <laughs> Pinnacle, MGF, Wardlow, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler make their way towards the commentary table. Dax grabs a headset and begins to talk about how losing their tag titles at Double or Nothing has pissed them off. And instead of having to sit here and endure this trash, it should be them in the ring now versus the Bucks in their rematch for the tag titles. It should be them arriving in a chopper. MGF then cuts in and talks about how every great team can have a slight blip. FTR suffered that a double or nothing, but he has every bit of confidence in them to go and win the tag titles back. They will get their contractual rematch. He shares a small joke with FTR that maybe Page and himself could challenge for the titles. This gives him an idea. He then looks into the camera, lays out a challenge to the Young Bucks at Beach Blast in two weeks. How about the Bucks against Page and MJF in a non title match? He doesn't want to beat them for the titles because that would just mean having to defend them against FTR. And he doesn't want that, but he just wants to teach them a lesson. He wants to get in the ring with the Young Bucks. And we get 68 for that. We'll see if that match gets accepted as we move into the first Fatal 4-Way tag team match. Who is advancing through to next week? Is it the Butcher and the Blade? Is it the Rascals from Impact? Is it Best Friends or Private Party? Well, in a decent match, it was the best of friends that came out on top after 10 minutes 30 the butcher and the blade went first then private party and finally the rascals Wentz and Dez making their AEW dynamite debut don't worry they are still part of impact it was part of a trade deal so they're just making the one-off appearance as they come in looking for a chance maybe to become number one contenders for the AEW world tag team titles and it just wasn't to be and surprisingly, the best friends, Chucky and Trent, going over. After the match, Private Pike, Mark Quinn and Isaiah Casti attack the winners, Trent and Chuck, from behind as they celebrate. ACH then comes storming out of the bat with Will Hobbs alongside him. They beat down the best friends. Hobbs is possessed using his strength. Orange Casti music plays as he strolls out. Private Pike, watch on. Once Orange Cassidy has finally made it to the ring and rolls inside, Mark and Isaiah go for a double team. OC just ducks. He does the same for Hobbs too, but comes alive as he, as Orange Cassidy punches ACH with an orange punch, laying him out. Best friends leave as Private Party are livid. Best friends advance to next week's match against whoever wins the final Fatal 4-Way tag team match later tonight. And just like that, new storyline has been born. The private party against the best friends. Should be an interesting one. Got a good idea where we're going to take it as we move over to the commentary table with JR Excalibur and Tony Schiavone. We're hot off the heels of the biggest show of the year, Double or Nothing. And what a night it was, gentlemen. The landscape has been changed here in AEW, whether that's for the good or the bad. I'd say for the bad JR, Steve Austin abused his right as enforcer this past Saturday, screwing John Moxley out of his title. There has to be some sort of repercussion. But saying that, we are set to have a champion celebration here tonight. Not just for Kenny Omega, but the elite as a whole. Yeah, that doesn't sit right with me. Anyway, that's not all. Kicking off tonight's show was one of two fatal four-way tag team matches. We know that Private Party will now face, well, that should say best friends, will now face whoever wins the second Fatal 4 way later here tonight on next week's episode of Dynamite for a future shot, the tag team titles. 
Dax and Cash are clearly upset about that. And he only just managed to beat Miro this past Saturday to become the TNT champion. And he's standing by with Alex Marvez. But before we get to that with Cody, we've got the tag team turmoil. We've also already seen the first tag team Fatal 4 way match. There is one more to come. We'll also see Sammy Guevara in action after losing against Chris Jericho at double or nothing against Jungle Boy. We will also hear from Death Triangle. Where are they going next? We'll find out. Also, after coming to blows in the men's casino ladder match back at double or nothing this past Saturday, Hangman Adam Page will take on Jeff Hardy. Also, Shayna Baszler looks to get a bit of revenge against Nana Rose. And of course, later tonight, the Elite Champions celebration not to be missed. But up next, Cody Rhodes' announcement. Alex Marvez interviews Cody Rhodes. He once again congratulates Cody on successfully defeating Miro this past Saturday at double or nothing to become the new TNT champion. Cody branches off talking about how this victory means so much to him, so much to the fans and to the network. When it seemed like TNT were taken hostage, Cody saves the day. Now he wants to do what the network expect, and that's defend the title week in, week out. And that begins tonight. He wants to go down in history as the greatest TNT champion, and the only way in doing so is to, by defending the title every week with every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears. He has a lot to give, and it's going to take a lot to put him down. He's gone from undesirable to undeniable in his career. You can't teach that. You have to do the work to earn it. Scorpio Sky walks in short, talks about how he has done the work, but continues to get overlooked. It's his time now. It's his right to be the face of the network. It starts tonight in the main event against Cody. Sky pushes past Cody, walking away. As we get a 65 for this segment, so it looks like... The match is made. The main event is made for late tonight. Cody Rhodes defending his TNT title for the first time against Scorpio Sky. Sammy Guevara of Team Taz makes his entrance full of confidence. He's joined by Ricky Starks and Taz, of course. Taz makes his way then over to the commentary desk, picking up a headset and saying how good it feels to be back behind the desk, but not to be joined by Shivani and JR. Meanwhile, all eyes around Sammy, who is taking his time to make his way to the ring as his opponent, Jungle Boy, is pacing back and forth. Obviously, tension's been rising lately between Team Taz and Jurassic Express. And in this singles match between Sammy Guevara and Jungle Boy, it goes on for 10 minutes 23. It's a decent match. And of course, Sammy Guevara defeats Jungle Boy after a 6 30 from the top. Sammy Guevara with a 65 in-ring performance and Jungle Boy Luchasaurus was at ringside also, but that won't have any part to play in this next segment because after Sammy Guevara picks up his win, Taz steps into the ring and so does Ricky Starks. Taz has a mic and begins to talk about how Sammy was under the thumb of Jericho for two years, but a double or nothing that came to an end as Sammy is now ready to realise his potential by being with Team Taz. Taz recalls Jericho stealing, robbing Sammy's place in the World Title Eliminator Tournament a month or so ago. Who knows how far Sammy could have gone in that World Title Eliminator Tournament. He could have beaten Kenny and gone all the way to face Moxley at double or nothing and be here right now as your new AEW World Champion. Taz speaks with aggression. He warns Tony Khan to make Sammy vs Omega a beach blast in two weeks here on Dynamite for the AEW title official. Sammy deserved his chance, his place in that tournament, and he demands Khan to make the right decision. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. And, well, that could very well happen because Team Taz picking up some amazing momentum at the moment. Sammy Guevara amongst the ranks now. Ricky Starks, Jeff Cobb, Brian Cage. New look Team Taz and with the potential of adding new members. Well, we'll just have to wait and see if Tony Khan does agree to this world title eliminator match as all three leave the ring. 
For our next segment, we see Penta El Zelo, Miedo, and Ray Phoenix flank Pack, who says, Do you think this is the end of Death Triangle? A few little losses here and there. Do you think that that is enough to shatter our confidence, our desire to continue to be the very foundations of AEW? If so, you're badly mistaken. We continue to learn. We will continue to adapt. And just like death, we will reign supreme. Death Triangle stare menacingly down on the camera as the picture fades to black. Hangman Page makes his way to the ring holding his casino chip that he won this past Saturday at Double or Nothing. Alongside him is Tully Blanchard of Pinnacle. Page set to do battle with Jeff Hardy after they came to blows in the casino ladder match at Double or Nothing this past Saturday. Darby Allen is also seen sat up in the stands, that lone, dark character that Darby Allen is and he seems to have had quite a bit of involvement with the Hardy uh, brothers lately. In a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Hangman Adam Page defeats Jeff Hardy in 940 after a turn. The Page would get 74 for this match, which also got the crowd buzzing. Hangman Page with a 76 in-ring performance. Let's have a look at the dirt sheet. Jeff Hardy going all out in this match. Jeff was penalised for inconsistency though, but you can imagine those two putting on a great match. But this is how the the ending went down. This is what I had in my mind. The match ended saw Tully Blanchard exchanging words with Matt Hardy on the outside. Bryce Rensberg got involved, turning his back on the action. Hangman Page went to grab his casino chip to use as a weapon on Jeff Hardy, but Darby Allen came out of nowhere and pulled it out of his grip. Page looked pissed. Jeff turned him round, went for his twist of fate, but Page dropped to his knees and hit a low blow. Tully and Matt are arguing with Bryce in the middle. Page is on the ring apron, lining Jeff up for the buckshot, but Darby grabbed his leg to stop him. But Wardlow, from out of nowhere, part of Pinnacle, charges Darby, running him over. And then Page hits his buckshot, pins Jeff when Bryce eventually calmed things down between Tully and Matt and got the three count. Now Page, Tully and Wardlow exit up the ramp. Matt checks on his brother Jeff. Darby slowly rolls into the ring hurting. Matt is a bit wary of him after everything that's been going on between those but decides to go over and check on him. Helps him to his feet. The Hardys and Darby together it seems. Maybe a match made in heaven. As we know, Darby Allen always being compared to someone like Jeff Hardy and a bit of Matt Hardy as well. Everything that the Hardys were about, Darby Allen seems to have formed that into his own sort of uh, style. So we'll have to see where that goes. We then go backstage where Renee talks to Tony Storm, who successfully defended her women's championship at double or nothing against Dr. Britt Baker. Renee congratulates her and asks, what's next? Is there anyone she would like to face next? Tony Storm thanks Renee and reveals she can't wait to get back into the ring again and she will be on the next episode of Dark. She is a student of the game and is always looking forward to the next challenge no matter how big or small. This is what she was born to do. Renee mentions Shayna Baszler and the threat she poses. Storm is all for it. Bring it on. Tessa Blanchard walks in though with the casino chip she won at double or nothing. She smirks and tells her, just a matter of when now. Not if Tessa walks away. We remember Tessa's debut. She said that one day she will face Tony Storm for her title. Well, it looks inevitable now, doesn't it? Up next, more in-ring action. Shayna Baszler finally getting her hands on Nyla Rose, who took her out of that casino ladder match this past Saturday. And Shayna Baszler, of course, picks up the win. After the match, Shayna won't let go of the Kimura on Nyla. Referees try to break the hole, but to no avail. She eventually lets go. She looks in a foul mood. As she begins to leave, Brandy Rhodes walks down the ramp to confront Shayna. Shayna gets in her face and can be heard saying she should have been in that casino ladder match. She's just doing what she believes is right. Nyla took her opportunity on Saturday, so she takes her arm and she will continue to do so to others that stand in her way. And she barges past Brandy, who doesn't really know what to do. Shayna Baszler, a real force within this women's division ever since signing for All Elite Wrestling. She looks unstoppable. Is this maybe going to lead to a title reign for her? A match against Tony Storm? We'll have to wait and see. 
Up next then, the Dark Order set to reveal the new Exalted One. Evil Uno and Stu Grayson stand side by side in the Dark Order's country retreat, looking at a huge Mr. Brody Lee painting hanging on the wall. Evil is heard saying, We won't let you down, Mr. Brody, sir. John Silver and Alex Reynolds come running in saying, He's here, he's here. The new Exalted One is here. Eric Redbeard, who sat in the corner, says, Well, go open the fucking doors then. The camera follows them. They open the huge doors and in walks Raven. He walks straight past Silver and Reynolds and straight past Evil and Stu, who had their hands out to greet him. Raven goes straight to Eric Redbeard, looks him in the eyes and shakes his hands. The new exalted one, Raven, is here. Not an easy decision to be given the Dark Order a new exalted one, but as Evil Uno said not so long ago in this save, they're not replacing Mr. Brody Lee. He'll always be a part of the Dark Order. It's just simply a process. Our final fatal four-way tag team match sees War Machine debut as they went head-to-head -head against the Motor City Machine Guns, the Hybrid 2 and Brian Cage and Jeff Cobb of Team Taz. And winning this match was the Motor City Machine Guns in 11 minutes 13. In order of elimination, Hybrid 2 went first, then War Machine on their debut, and finally Brian Cage and Jeff Cobb. Cage and Cobb working so well together, it's really good to see. But the outcome of this match now means that the best friends will take on Motor City Machine Guns next week on Dynamite. And we'll see what comes of that. Well, after this match, as the Moat City Machine Guns celebrate their win, Brian Cage and Cobb continue to fight with Raymond Rowe and Hanson of War Machine. The fight makes its way up the ramp. Sarah Rowe races out the tunnel and jumps onto the back of Cobb, looking to choke him out. Cage gets the better of Hanson and heads over to give Cobb a hand. He grabs Sarah from his back, lifts her up onto his shoulders and heads towards the edge of the stage. He has evil intentions in mind, Rose stops in his tracks and he's heard saying, Don't you fucking dare. Sarah tries to wriggle free, but no luck. Cage lifts Sarah up, smirks, and runs off the stage, hitting a drill claw through tables with equipment on below. It certainly is a holy shit moment. Cage manages to stand and he joins Cobb. Both leave as Rose is distraught as he checks on Sarah. His wife, as we know, certainly not the debut he and War Machine were hoping for here on Dynamite. And this, of course, will kick off a bit of a storyline, small storyline, which will probably come to a head at Beach Blast in two weeks' time, where Cobb and Cage will, will inevitably do battle with War Machine. Cody Rhodes is seen making his way to the ring alongside Arn ahead of his main event TNT Tart defense against Scorpio Sky. They bump into the elite Kenny Omega, Don Callis, Matt and Nick Jackson. Omega, Matt and Nick congratulate Cody for his win this past Saturday at Double or Nothing. They share a few memories of their time in Japan when they were all champions together. Now look at us. Omega seems like he wants to hurry this meeting along. Matt finishes up by inviting Cody to their champion celebration. All he has to do is stick around once he's retained his title. They all walk off apart from Callis who arrogantly asks Cody to make sure his match is a quick one as the Elite don't want to be waiting around and constrained by time. They want to celebrate properly. As he walks off Cody seems thoughtful and Arn tries to get his head back in the game. Tries to get Cody focused once more as they make their way towards the entrance. So Don Callis here playing that villain role perfectly. Uh, maybe he's not too fond of Cody and his alliance with the Elite, with his friends of Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick. We'll just have to wait and see where that goes then with Cody Rhodes. But up next is Cody Rhodes defending his TNT title for the first time against Scorpio Sky in about that have fantastic heat and great wrestling. Cody Rhodes defeats Scorpio Sky in 10 minutes 54 by pinfall after a beautiful disaster. During the match, we also had Frankie Kazarian distract Sky, so this played a big part in the overall result. 
I did set it to spectacle, but that uh, obviously went against it as uh, there simply wasn't enough time for the workers to create. I, I should have put steel the show uh, for this match, seeing that it only went for 10 minutes 54. So massive mistake there on my part, but we did still get a very good 74 rate in there. Uh, for our main event. Cody Rhodes goes over. Of course, he's never going to drop the TNT title so close to winning it for the first time at double or nothing this past Saturday. Well, after the match, Cody Rhodes wins. He holds the title up to celebrate, but it gets cut short as about 20 members from the tech team begin to dress the ring and ringside up ahead of the champion celebration for the Elite. Cody looks a bit annoyed. He slowly exits the ring as he is kind of has to as he's ushered out of the ring by team members. Uh, once the ring is decorated, Kenny Omega and Don Callis make their way to the ring with Matt and Nick Jackson and the Young Bucks following close behind by Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Good Brothers. They fail to notice Cody as he moves himself and on around the ring and then disappears up the side of the ramp towards the back. The elites seem too wrapped up in themselves and this champion's celebration. We get a 72 for this segment, so Cody just completely ignores. And his title defence, his first ever title defence of the TNT title, completely overshadowed by these tech members dressing the ringer. Well, when Dynamite comes back from the break, Kenny Omega, Don Callis, Matt and Nick Jackson, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson stand in the ring. Callis begins to talk about how Kenny Omega overcame such incredible odds at double or nothing. How once again Omega is in the history books of this beautiful sport. How he is winner of yet another seven star match. He then talks up the Young Bucks, all champions, the elite officially taking over. Kenny takes the mic and wishes to get something off his chest. He talks about the whole screw job with Austin. He jokes about Mark's laid up at home, titleless, scratching his head, wondering why, Austin, why? Mocking JR as well at the same time. Omega, the elite, a goddamn EVPs. They do what they want, when they want, and there ain't nobody that can put a stop to them. They aren't just a club of friends, but a family. They're no longer content. He thanks Tony Khan for believing in them for ploughing so much of his money and time into them, for their vision. And that vision is all of them being champions of their own wrestling show. And we get an 82 for that segment. Finishing up Dynamite, Kenny Omega continues to spew out how using Austin was perfect and everyone should have seen it coming, but they didn't. The elite love it when history repeats itself. As Omega continues to talk with Matt and Nick Jackson flanking him. Four guys dressed in black, wearing masks, with a white skull on, surround the ring. The elite stop, looking at all four sides of the ring. They're surrounded. Omega begins to call for security. No one comes. The first guy to peel back the mask, to reveal himself, is AJ Styles. Another mask comes off. It's Jay Switchblade White. Then the final two come off to reveal both Tama Tonga and Tangaloa. Tama gives the elite a little sarcastic wave. AJ points a gun at Kenny and Jay slices his throat. The elite look like they've seen ghosts. AJ, Jay, Tama, Tanga don't attack but begin to leave up the entranceway where they are met by Tony Khan. Message sent. Dynamite comes to an end. Comes to a cliff hanging end as well. So the Bullet Club are here in all elite wrestling. AJ Styles set to maybe give Kenny Omega a bit of payback after what went down in New Japan. We remember how Kenny Omega turned on AJ Styles, booting him out of the Bullet Club all those years ago when AJ Styles received that offer from Stanford. It was Jay White who turned on Kenny Omega and Tama, an OG Bullet Club member. It all points towards 
one hell of a storyline and I hope I can get this one right I hope I can really put this one over for you guys watching as we get 74 for this show for this episode of Dynamite hot off the heels of the biggest show of the year double or nothing and having the Bullet Club Nye debut it's just setting up for maybe another year long story we'll have to wait and see it's all coming together just nicely. I'm liking the direction where we're, uh, we're taking things. Hope you guys are as well. Because I'm just having an absolute blast uh, with this save at the moment. And I, I really do hope that that is coming across as well. So this week we drew a 74. We had 9,653 in attendance. We scored a 2.02 TV rating with a total of 1.5 million viewers tuning in over on the all elite network we have 301,000 viewers i think that is slowly increasing week by week over on tnt we had 881,000 uh tuning in there so let's have a look how nxt did this week so yeah show rate and show quality we did beat nxt that was to kind of be expected you know coming off the heels of double and nothing uh but they did have um a much better overall rating with viewers they scored 1.56 million uh, viewers there so nxt just edging it this week anyway that is it for this episode of dynamite it's been a long one uh, but that's to be expected coming off uh, double or nothing next week well we'll be even closer to beach blast you don't want to miss it and what next for the elite and bullet club don't miss it thanks for watching